Hi everybody, Ben here from Artless Ordinary. So, today we are doing an alcohol ink on glass. So, I really enjoy these. Um, I've always loved doing alcohol inks. And they do work a little bit differently on glass. So, what I have done is, I have used that same masking fluid, um, sorry, masking paint that I got. And let me see if I can get this underneath here to show you don't know how easy that is to see I have done a pattern which is a butterfly so I have virtually put the masking paint into this I have squeezed it out into a butterfly shape I've left it to dry um, it's actually dried a little bit longer than I planned but it's on glass it should come off easily so that is the plan now the hardest part is always like normal trying to figure out exactly how we're gonna position it all or mix the colors in and I always just say have a bit of fun and go for it with alcohol inks especially on glass um, you can't actually go too wrong you just have to redo it if you don't like what you see sorry I'm just plugging in my Little, yep, that works. My little fan, in case I need it. So, we are going to do pinks and purples today. So, and I'm going to use a blending solution instead of just plain alcohol ink. Well, we'll see. I'll start off with this and see how it goes. But, um, I haven't used this before. I've only ever used just like isopropyl alcohol, but we'll, we'll see how it goes because... It's supposed to be quite good. All right, so I'm just putting some on. I'm gonna put, keep my caps on. And I have a mixture of paper mill and Eraldo, no. Um, I can't even think of the name now. I'm sorry, but my brain's not working. Canata alcohol inks. So I'm going to just add a, mostly the that's magenta, but I'm going to add a little bit of lavender. This lavender is quite light. It doesn't. Um, it's not overly heavy. I'm going to start off using the brush, I think, to maneuver it around. Just until I get things where I roughly want them to be. Add more. Okay, so. I do want there to be some kind of blending and effects going on, but at the same point, I do want to make, so, oops, I did the wrong cap. But as you can see with these other areas, I actually want them to be This stripper is so frustrating. I'm going to have to get myself a new bottle, I think, because this one doesn't come out the way I prefer it to be. And as we can see, it's 
bleeding off. But we do kind of want it to be a little bit, it's an alcohol ink, we don't really want it to be super defined like a painting. Maybe this will be more, more how I want it to be actually. We'll see how we go. So now we'll do this other side. Add this lighter color which is the lavender into the main area not the whoops we got some in the patterned area that's all right So last time we got some graininess in there and I've got a feeling it might have been from the blower. So we'll see how we go. Now when I add some of this darker colour, It's probably gonna yeah leak out like it did before because it doesn't drip too precisely It's actually looking a little bit cool. So, so far the body has, is coming out very, um, it got, did get some pink in there. So, I'm trying to think. I think it's going to be a little bit difficult to make the body of it a little bit different, but I'll try and just add the lighter colour only. So here I'm just picking up colour on my brush and just dabbing it in the other areas. I 
Okay. Well, that's mostly the butterfly done. But as a background, I do want it to be blue, but not solid blue. I kind of want that um, alcohol ink feel to it. So we just have to see how this dries in the butterfly, whether we need to do any touch-ups after. So let's just put a little bit of this blending solution. Keep taking off the wrong lids. <clears throat> I can't get that lid off at the moment, so let's because I need to get some liquid into this blending solution before it dries. And I know sometimes it looks like you're using a lot of alcohol, but they are drips and there's no point sometimes being too light on something. You do want, you kind of want your artwork to actually turn out. So I often say don't be too stingy and then your artwork doesn't become what you want it to be. Now, I definitely have to try to get the lid off this bottle. There we go. This is where I need to clean some of these heads, I think. Just get yourself an alcohol wipe. And clean up the dry paint that's on these heads. Okay, not as much of this because it does have that blue, I mean green tinge to it. So what I'm going to do first of all is just try to cover the area that I want the paint to be at. And then you can go in and add some effects after if you like. And you can take the back of this, the glass, so then the, um, the ink doesn't go through onto the other side. But all I do is I just wipe it with alcohol later on. So um, there's no actual main need to tape it off. As you can see, all I'm doing is I'm just manoeuvring the ink to cover all the glass and just make sure there's no gaps. You don't have to do this all the time, but because I'm because I'm doing a painting that's got negative space where the um, masking tape is. You kind of want there not to be any other negative space around because then you're kind of de detracting from doing that butterfly shaped with the um, masking tape and masking paint.
what I'm going for here is not so much perfection in colours. I want there to be kind of like a sky. Bits that are more green, bits that are more blue, bits that are more um, sapphire or darker blues. That was the whole plan. Same with the inside of the butterfly. I wanted it to be pinks and purples, but it doesn't have to be... I want it to kind of look a little bit blendy. Alcohol inks are supposed to have that feel kind of like a watercolour. And... That's really what I'm after. So now I've done that, this is where you can go ahead and go, no, I need something a little bit more different coming through in that area. And we want a little bit coming through there. So each drop is kind of doing its little thing. You can wait for them to dry completely or you can put them on when they're still a little bit wet over the top of each other and they'll give you different types of effects. If you want tiny effects, then get yourself out a dotting tool, which um, it's kind of like a cotton swab in a way, with a small end on it, and you can kind of pick up colours and dot them on. So ultimately, wherever you do a dot, it's going to reactivate that ink and then change it and push it away again and give you a different kind of effect. And if you want an area to lighten up, then you do a dot of just plain alcohol or a blending solution and it will do a similar thing. It will move everything away from where you are or what you're doing. And if you want to, you can blow it and manipulate it in a way that you want. I kind of want it to be a little bit like it's just happening. Now, one thing I do want to do is I like the look of things when they are, have been spritzed, which is a very, very light spraying of isopropyl. But go very gentle like I only do like a tiny little push just so some comes out and do it from a distance and let it just fall down onto it so as you can see it's come through mostly on this side so I'm gonna let them dry before I go to do the other side they're making more of a mark in the background than they are in the butterfly. The butterfly they're showing up a little bit but not as much. So they're mostly dry now so we'll do a little spritz over this side. Oops, that went more in the butterfly. So again each time let it dry before you do it again 
otherwise you they will just mix together and make big circles when I'm trying to get those nice fine little specks kind of like raindrops so each time I do this I'm just leaving it letting it dry and seeing what effects come up <laughs> went in one spot there. Again, see, I went close with that. I should have stayed back from a distance. But again, let it dry. It's going to make different effects depending on where you are with it. I might try and do a few in this wing over here. And I want to get up, I want to get that corner as well, so I'm going to let it dry a bit more. And you really can't see the full potential of this at the moment because you're not seeing the colour from underneath. And on glass, this behaves differently to if this was on um, a different surface. I don't know if this light is going to help, but let me see if this... It's not really showing up what it would be like underneath, is it? May... No. Not enough. I don't think any of my other torches will show up. Could probably turn it on, pick it up. No, I can't. I need a third hand. That can. That's showing you a little bit more. I don't want to tilt it too much because I want it to dry. But at least this way here, you can actually, if you do this, you can look through it and see if there's areas you want to change. I don't know if I do want to change anything really. I may just do a little spritz again. Some areas I'm not getting a lot of effects or not as not as defined. When I do this on U Upo paper, um, I'll actually get more defined effects because I find the glass behaves differently. A little bit down this corner. But each time you do this and let it dry, you'll get more and more things show up and happen in it. Kind of makes things a little bit cool. And again, this is a bit of fun. You go, if you aren't happy, put on a whole pile of blending solution or whatever and just keep adding and changing things until that's what you are happy with. I really don't think I'm going to bother going too much more. What I will do is I am going to um, blow it with my blower now just to dry it out a little bit so let me actually double check I let this um, whatever it's called the masking paint set longer and I wonder if it is I wonder if it would peel easier Yeah, see, this bit, this white bit, or clear part, is, is very hard. When the bits that have had the alcohol, they have gone a little bit, um, like I've said before, soft or squishy. They've kind of got that, like it, the chemicals have reacted in it. So really, I'm probably going to have to pause it and let it dry a bit longer before I start taking it off. 
but I'm going to try to keep the camera. So last time I tried doing this, the camera ran out, the phone ran out of power. So now I plugged it in. So hopefully even if I keep it paused for a period of time, it will keep its charge long enough to actually um, be able to be all in one video where I can peel it off and show you the end, end result. So, where are we? I think I am going to pause it and I will come back and show you what is happening. I'm just going to let it dry more and we'll see how it goes. Okay, pausing. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm letting it dry. So the bits that don't have the alcohol ink sitting on it from the masking fluid, masking paint, when you tap them, they're relatively hard still. But when you tap this, the ones that have been sitting in the masking, um, the alcohol inks, they've gone sticky. So the alcohol must just react with this type of, um, so this is that tinned masking paint, not masking fluid. So I've got, I've got masking fluid that's arrived, so I'm going to do a test on that um, tomorrow. But yeah, so for the moment... Um, I have to just keep letting it dry. So what I would do is I'll keep it paused as long as I can and I'm going to just keep blowing on it with my little blower and hopefully that there um, dries it out where I can peel it off and actually show you the end result um, in the one video. So that is my plan. So for you guys it won't be very long but for me I'll be pausing it and trying to blow it with the dryer for probably 20 minutes, half an hour, and see how it goes. So we will be back. All right, we're back again. So I'm going to attempt to start peeling some of this off and just see if it's too sticky or whether it actually comes off easy enough for the moment. So what I'm just going to do is I get my tweezers and I kind of give it a bit of a pinch and then kind of lift. So let's do this larger piece here first. Definitely has that stickiness feel about it. Oh, maybe. No, I don't think it's coming off as clean as I would prefer it to. Yeah, it still feels like there's some wet um, ink behind it. So. I'm just going to have to pause it and leave it a little bit longer and because as you can see what happens when it's still a little bit wet is when you lift it it kind of sometimes um, not bleeds but leaves a little streak where there's some like undried parts so we're going to leave this longer I'm really hoping the proper masking fluid from the artist does differently um, so it's a bit easier to take off sooner um, but it's just a practice game and seeing what actually does work at the right time. So I'm going to have to pause it, let it settle in and hopefully dry it a bit longer and we will come back afterwards. So pausing again and let's see what happens after. Okay, so we're back. So it's coming off a little bit better now. Um, it's had a little bit more time to dry. It's still slightly sticky. So all as I really do is I get my tongs or tweezers, sorry. Tongs, I couldn't imagine trying to do this with tongs. And you kind of grab it. And then lift. And just... There we go. Then we get the next part. So sometimes picking it up the first part, but once it starts lifting, then it lifts a lot easier.
then I just keep going around it's still definitely a bit sticky and a little bit wet so some of the ink is still on it as you can see it's coming off in my fingers a bit so if I left this to the morning it would be much easier um, it wouldn't have so much of the stickiness in it but I'm trying to show you guys on camera so I'm trying to show you guys in the whole video the whole process of start to finish so we are getting there Where it's got thicker lines, it does feel a little bit easier. So it just seems to be where the um, the alcohol seems to just react a little bit with this um, masking paint. The circles are actually the easiest. I just kind of pinch them and lift. So that there is all the inner lines. And I've definitely stained my fingers. So now I'm going to attempt to do this outer line, which I'm thinking will come up easier just for the fact that not so much of it got wet with the, um, the alcohols. So I'm going to pick one line to lift. And if it breaks, I'm going to let that bit settle there. Because you don't want too many lines going all at once. Which is what's happening now. So I'm going to try and get these antennas. And then I'm going to keep going with this, well, my left side of the butterfly wings. So ultimately, if you guys are at home, you won't have to have your video done all at once. So just leave it till the morning. Or if you do your artwork in the morning, leave it till the end of the day before you try to remove this. I'm hoping the masking fluid will be different to this masking paint and actually come off a little bit easier. But this is... Sometimes you've got to test products to know exactly how they're all going to work. So, see how that's sticky? When that wasn't like that before I did this, this was actually fully dried before I put the alcohol on. So, first, let me just double check from an angle that I've removed all of the pieces. And there we go, that's my finished artwork.
don't know how easy that is for you guys to see. What will happen is, I'm going to put this in a picture frame. So we're actually not going to see this side. We're going to see that side. So once it's in the picture frame, this will be the side that you see. So that way there, you're not actually going to damage any of the alcohol ink. Um, because you can wipe the front down and it will be just plain glass. So what we do from here is, I've got my... Let me grab it. I have my picture frame. Now, what I do is I just put some blank pieces of paper or a blank piece of white cardboard. So, that's a grey piece. So, I'm just going to get some paper and put it in here cut it to size and then i'll put the, the painting in so i will pause it while i do this because i'm um, i'm not going to be able to do it on screen anyway and then i'll come back so pausing okay we are back we have peeled off everything and now we have put it in its frame so now this here just sits in, this is just a, a floating frame, plastic border, um, but the glass just pushes down into the front. And um, I put white paper behind it. So you can put different colored paper behind it if you like. Um, it would, I'd probably go a light color, it'd probably look okay if it had a light pastel. But as you can see, it's you've got the alcohol inks, the colors come through quite vibrantly. Um, this is actually, the butterfly shape actually came out a bit more darker than I was expecting. So next time I will definitely use less ink um, and maybe lighter colors, but I'm still really pleased with it. Um, the background's beautiful. It kind of has that um, splashed look in a way. Um, blues and a little bit of, um, it was a teal, but it's kind of got that green tone to it. So. Ultimately, I'm really happy. The um, masking fluid has come off nice and clean, which is giving you these beautiful lines. You can do whatever pattern you like. Um, and this bottle that I squeeze it out of doesn't have the smallest um, tip. If you want thinner lines, just use a thinner tipped, um, whatever they call a bottle, like more like a needle, a needle nose one and you would get thinner lines. But really, really pleased. So, this stuff works on glass much better than it did on the alcohol ink boards. So my next test is with the actual masking fluid for art, which is this one I'm gonna do next time. But this one here was done with masking paint, which I got from the paint shop. And this works on glass quite well. So. This is what we gotta do as artists. We gotta test things and see how they go. I don't know how good you guys can see this on camera, so I'm going to turn it back around my way, and then I'm going to bring you down for a close-up. And there we go. So as you can see, beautiful. I'm gonna unplug it, I've got the phone charging. As you can see, beautiful different effects in this background. We can see where I've sprayed it. You get those bubbles, well, like raindrops effects in there. You've got, okay, stay focused. You've got the butterfly and see how the, the lines have come out pretty good, pretty straight. Um, if I had left it overnight, they would have been even better because there was a couple of spots, like this one little spot here where a little bit of paint went into the negative space. But even here, see the raindrop effects? So, I was just hoping this would be a little bit lighter, but that's that's something I'm got, I've learnt and I will do next time. And this is also using artificial lights. Um, it actually looks a little bit brighter in real life than it does in the camera. Don't know if I can change that. That's going the wrong way. 